are nominating should receive 50 free chicken sandwiches from WOCA and Chick-fil-A at the Paddock Mall. We'll review your nominations and then select one deserving organization each month. We'll announce the winner and even read the winning entry on the air. Make sure to include the contact name and phone number of the organization that you are nominating. And thanks from your friends at WOCA and Chick-fil-A in the Paddock Mall. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, five minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. You know, if you were uh, a hungry person and, and you, were, you were looking for somebody who could, could make food, you might go to classified ads and, and put like HP, that's hungry person, looking for a uh, you know, food maker, F- FM or something like that. Hungry person. Right, right. <laughs> right? And so, so the, the, the food person who makes the food says, you know what? I don't want you to be so upfront. I don't want you to ask for food. I know you want food. I just don't want you to ask for food. That's pretty much the way it is with men and women trying to find each other. There's a man looking for sex, and there's a woman who, who can provide it, and, and she doesn't want him to say, that's what I'm looking for. So, uh-huh. so in the classified edge, you have guys who say, you know, I, I like to fish. Yeah, I like to, uh, you know, watch football games. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, but they, we've been trained. Hey, don't don't put in that classified ad looking for somebody that I can have sex with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't want you don't want to see that, you women, right? You don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's confusing. And if I am confused, I shouldn't feel bad because even Freud was confused. One of the criticisms of Freud, the way I understand it, is that he didn't get it either because mm-hmm. he was a man. Yeah. So, so we need to understand this. Dr. Warren Chappelle may have one up on Freud. Uh, he has written a book. Now, this is not your normal erotic fiction book. Mm-hmm. Because in this book, guys, you will learn a little bit about what the ladies want. I've often thought if you read a ladies magazine, not, and I don't mean Woman's Day. I don't mean meatloaf recipes. Yeah. I mean like Cosmopolitan. You might get an inkling of what women want, or maybe not. I know that if women read men's magazines, you sort of figure out, but I don't think, I think that's no secret. Uh, Dr. Chappelle is a counseling psychologist. He's a pioneer in the employee assistance programs industry, uh, oddly enough. Um, that's corporations providing mental health counseling for their employees and their families. He's the recipient of the Silver Lifetime Achievement Award. That's pretty awesome. Uh, that's from Benefit Canada. And his book is called A Woman's Pleasure. If you open it up and read it, you will find that it's very erotic yep i would recommend that if you are reading this book in your car guys you do not put it down and walk into the mall <laughs> right away <laughs> let yourself cool down a little bit first yeah, make sure we, you have a snack and we, we broadcast from the mall just for the sake of our guest dr Chappelle, who's listening in and just so he knows every once in a while we'll see some guy walking past and you think i wonder what they were just looking at yeah <laughs> Uh, Dr. Chappelle, the book is called A Woman's Pleasure, and the doctor has written it under a pen name. So you need to know that if you're going to look for the book. It's J.F. Kelly, J.F. Kelly, but his real name, Dr. Warren Chappelle. So we're going to pick his brain a little bit about what women want, or at least I will. Dr. Chappelle, good morning, doctor. Good morning, good morning. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm in Miami right now. Oh, in Miami. Not too far away, really. Just a hop and a skip compared to some of the guests we have. So thank you for being on the air with us. How is it that a psychologist wrote a book that, that on first glance looks like Fifty Shades of Grey? Well, actually, that was one of the motivations because I felt that Fifty Shades of Grey was catering to a minority of people, and it didn't cover the mainstream lovemaking behaviors of people. And so therefore, I wanted to write something, because I had worked with couples for 30 years, counseling couples and counseling them on their relationships. And I thought Fifty Shades doesn't really capture the mainstream uh, population. So that's why one of the reasons I said, I'm going to put a book together that captures more of the mainstream activities that people engage in in lovemaking. And, and so my, my um, statement that a guy who reads this book will understand women a lot better while at the same time being entertained and maybe even turned on, which, by the way, how did you write this? 
without without having to get up a lot. <laughs> but 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 I mean, uh, am I right about that? Is this is this going to be is this going to help us better than the Cosmopolitan uh, article would? Yes, it will. Yes, it will because I've had a lot of feedback now from readers, both men and women, that the stories because there are over. Uh, 150 different stories in the novel, and uh, there are 25 men featured. So there are seven, seven or eight episodes per man that talk about their lovemaking encounters. And so it, it, is, it, it is erotic fiction, but at the same time, underneath, underneath that and underlying the erotic fiction are truisms about lovemaking and the relationship between men and women. So that at one level, it is erotic, it is sensual, but at another level, it talks, it provides a role model for men as to how they should work with and treat with men. And also it teaches women to understand the men better. But uh, for the most part, it is focused on making men f- become more aware of how they are different from women. Why is this only a human problem? It seems like the animals have figured it out. If a, if a male dog, for example, is interested in a female and she's not, she just says, get out of here. And so she sits down or something. He gets the message and he leaves. Yeah. Why, why are we so confused? Is it because of movies and, and TV, etc.? All of that. The media, the, the parenting that we went through, the education process, the, our religion, teachings, our schooling, and also... Uh, the recent onset of pornography and, and the pornography that's not only on video but on the Internet, it teaches men to, to do things that women don't necessarily like at all. And also it teaches men to satisfy themselves rather than to work with the woman to, so that both of them get satisfied and both of them get pleasure and fulfilled. So, and also there is the pressure that men should know it all, and therefore men, be, men behave in ways that don't ask women what they want and what would pleasure them. Is, so, can, can I ask about two different types of men? I want to ask you about the man who loves his woman, I mean, in the, in the truest sense of love, and then the man who's just looking for a sex toy uh, in a woman, which is absurd to me, but, but people do. Um, are they? Do they approach the sex act differently? Does the guy who truly loves his wife um, really enter into that sexual moment differently than the other guy? Probably not, uh, unless the the man that truly loves his woman has taken the time to ask her what it is that pleasures her and what it is that satisfies her and everybody is unique each person each man each woman is unique and therefore a lover needs to find out what the other person is is feeling and thinking and what turns them on what doesn't turn them on what their likes and dislikes are and very often people don't spend time communicating those uh, likes and dislikes to each other they sort of feel that they have to do what they are doing sort of um, instinctively rather than with open communication with each other. Mm. Is that true for any age? Well, I think the more mature people, uh, in terms of older people, spend more time, um, spend more time communicating. Uh, so therefore, they're more likely to know the other person better but the problem is that a lot of the encounters the intimate encounters that people first experience are in the in the earlier years uh, before they settle down and so therefore therefore they're not as informed about each other as they could be are, are women more uh, aware of, of, of what a guy wants than men are of what women want not completely, and I'll tell you. For example, uh, in my in my book, A Woman's Pleasure, I write about the fact that men peak about five to six times 
earlier than a woman. And therefore, for, women ask for foreplay not because it's something they want. It's something they need. Men need to delay their peaking so that they can peak at the same time. Hmm. Doctor, we have to take a little break because we have a weather break. Uh, but I, I know that our listeners want to hear more about this subject. It's, it's always a it's always a hot topic. Mm -hmm. It's a hot topic every single time. This is the first time, though. I think it's been delivered the way you're doing it. We'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunny to partly cloudy today and pleasant this afternoon, high 80 to 84. Partly cloudy tonight, lows ranging from the upper 50s in some interior locations to 66 along the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny and warm. There may be a morning shower in spots along the coast, the high 80 to 84. On Friday, partly sunny and becoming less humid with highs in the 70s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you tired of not using your home's outdoor space for entertaining or relaxation because of all the bugs and leaves? Consider adding a beautiful screen room or glass enclosure. We are Superior Aluminum and Design, a family-owned and operated business with 20 years experience in the aluminum industry. And we are accredited by the Better Business Bureau. If you appreciate superior workmanship, call Superior Aluminum and Design at 817-8058 or visit us on the web at superioraluminumdesign.com. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA, The Source, every night from 2 to 6 a.m., and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep, and neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us, 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA, The Source. All right. Thank you for staying with us 17 minutes after nine o'clock and uh we're talking about sex babies dr warren Chappelle is on the phone he has written a book it is called a woman's pleasure he writes under a pen name it's important to know this because that's how you'll find the book jf kelly is the name he writes under but he is a counseling psychologist and you probably have read read many erotic fiction books you've probably or well, maybe who knows what <laughs> depending on who you are some of you have read them some of you haven't but if you have you've probably never read one written by a psychologist mm -hmm. typically and i heard him telling you this off the air robin that typically and kind of he kind of helped me out in the break uh, to go in this direction right now a psychologist typically will write a very uh like, Text a, like a textbook like yeah on, on how to understand the sex and sexual needs of each other uh dr chappelle chose to do it as a as a novel and i think a very very smart move on his part because we will pick up novels mm -hmm. we will read novels we do get sucked into them mm -hmm. and uh bad choice of words wasn't it uh dr chappelle mm -hmm. thank you for that waiting waiting i'm sorry <laughs> i'm supposed to be an entertaining figure <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chappelle, thank you for waiting f with us. What, so when you decided to write the book, was it to help um, us out in, in this regard? And, and did you feel that a, a novel would uh, reach us better than a, than a textbook? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, and I feel yes, because uh, erotic fiction, people will more likely read something that is fictional than is than it is, as you said, a textbook or, or, uh, or academic. Uh, and it, it's meant to help both men and women as well as couples, people who are even married, uh, to, um, to show them that they can better appreciate each other and better communicate with each other and, and understand that their sexual and intimate encounters can be improved uh, so that... It is something that is accessible to the to the mainstream population rather than to just a few academics. So I, ha I have a question. You made a statement earlier that that um, pornography is misleading. It, it it depicts 
people having sex in a way that makes it look like the women enjoy certain things that they really absolutely don't enjoy. If we extend pornography beyond the videos uh, and go to the novels, the novels do the exact same things. Not yours, but many of the others do. Um, and it is kind of hard to understand, especially when some of those novelists are women. Now, I don't know who the women are that are in those films, but when the whim a woman writes a book and includes those types of scenes, it is very, very confusing to a man because you go, oh, a woman wrote this. We had the lady on who was an actress in Bonanza. Yeah. I can't remember her name, but she mm. was an actress. She was kind of famous from the TV show Bonanza. She went on to become a, uh, a purple prose novelist, I guess you mm -hmm. call it. And you read her stuff and you go, wow. So a lady wrote this. Well, I mean, yeah. is it, are people, I, I'm so confused. As a 60-year-old man, I still have no clue. I'm like Fred. I don't have an, any idea. Well, it is confusing because we are moving away from this uh, concept that women should be just catering to men. And I think that some of the books that, are talking about pornography or writing about pornography and where the woman is where where the woman is exploited and used to satisfy the man i think over time we should be moving away from that because that is unhealthy because that's not what women want oh yeah want. i think so too i i'm absolutely in agreement with that but but going back to the, my ex, my question about the man who loves his wife isn't that what he wants he wants to know what do you really want and a lot of times psychologists will come on and say well the answer we had a lady just last week or so and she said well men want sex and women want romance so is romance not sex is it something different is it flowers instead of naked time in bed mm -hmm. <laughs> what is but it it's really a combination. I have a lot of articles on my website, awomanspleasure.com, uh, the book's website, awomanspleasure.com, and uh, it's very interesting. You see, sex and romance should be together. Even if it's casual sex, it should be together. It, it makes much more sense uh, for both the man and the woman. What men don't know is that they need to be attentive to their women. They need to d delay their peaking so that women and men can have the pleasure and fulfillment at the same time or close to the same time. And therefore, foreplay and even afterglow. Women, women like to have afterglow and men tend to Men tend to get up and go to, the, go to ra raid the refrigerator or turn around and fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Afterglow. <laughs> the afterglow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have different personalities uh, in your book that are really uh, wonderful. They depict real scenarios, and I think that works a lot better than having a textbook. That's correct. There are there are twenty five different men plus about uh, seven or eight experiences per man. But what's interesting is that. These men are all very attentive to their women, but they're real life situations. They're not, they're, they don't quote endless amount of research and endless amount of data, uh, but in reality, it, they, they become role models for men and women as to how they can relate to each other. Are we physically um, making love the right way? I mean, people have, you have these books about a hundred different positions and all that stuff, but are we physically, <laughs> I don't know I ask this question without seeming obscene, but, but I mean, the body parts that are supposed to rub together, are they connecting? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to answer that at all, but I, I, I would, I would like to say this, that I think that if people listen to each other rather than on rather than focusing on their own needs if they mm. if they listen to each other mm. for example in in some of the stories i talk about the woman guiding the man's hand over her body and you see each woman is unique so there's different parts that will be stimulating and mm. and exciting for a woman compared to another woman and so therefore the man has to discover what it is unique for her. 
But if he's only focused on satisfying himself, which uh, some people say can very often take only two or three minutes before he's finished, um, if, if men can listen to their women and follow them and listen to their moaning and listen to their, watch their facial expressions and also be attentive to, to their movements, I think that romance and sexual intimacy can be, can be at the same level and occurring at the same time. And it can be in a short, I- I- intimate encounter, or it could be in a married couple's relationship that lasts for a lifetime. I think this is a good book for women also, because sometimes circumstances in life, the women just sort of don't want to have the sex anymore or be intimate. Uh, but that's that's really a, a great part of life, and you have to do that f- not just for your partner, but for yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also a great, uh, it's a great book for creating fantasies for women and, and, and meeting their fantasies and addressing their fantasies uh, because it, it shows w- a lot of women are single. A lot of women don't have men in their lives, and we forget that. We, we always think of the married couple, but there are a lot of women out there that are single and without men, but yet at the same time ha- are, ha- you know, have feelings, have a soul, have a heart, and they also have a sexual drive. And so, therefore, these have to be met in one way or another. And fantasies can be one of the, the ways they can do that. And so the book can addresses the fantasies for women as well, especially because the men are attentive in, in, in these stories and they're responsive to their women. And, we're, and women, I don't know if you know about the stories in detail, but... The women very often drive the 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 energy and the sexuality as much as the men do. So it's really a very um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, it, it creates equality in the relationship okay. more than than ever. Okay, uh, Doctor, we have the the phones ringing. I want to make sure you are able to answer some questions from some listeners, sure. if that's okay with you. Are you okay with that? Oh yes, I am. All right, let me go to the phone. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air now with Doctor Warren Chappelle. Oh, hi, Dr. Spatel. Well, you know, I give you and, and anyone um, handling, no pun intended, this subject a lot of credit because, um, you know, uh, the brain, the largest sex organ, right? And and everything that's in, uh, involved with our thoughts and emotions. And I just wanted to throw in that um, really, I mean, it's the little things, right? I mean, just for a man or a woman to show the other just little things like asking them if they'd, you know, like something, you know, would you like a drink or, I mean, I mean, in everyday life, just to show that the other person's thinking of them, you know, oh, honey, what, you know, what can I pick up for you at the store? It's those, it's just like those little things, really. And then if people are involved in their interests and fulfilled, um, it'll just kind of help the brain overall and be, new, be more receptive and, and make the person just more at peace and happier overall. And that will lead to better relationship and communication. So, you know, I, you know it's, it's, a, it's an interesting subject, and thank you for all your input. But uh, I just wanted to share that and see what you had to say. Hey, well, those are, those are very good points because... Because one of the things that I say over and over again in the book, A Woman's Pleasure, I talk about the fact that it's not just the sexuality that counts. It's, it's all the little things, like you said, that, that are important. And people have to be reminded. It, it's, it's strange. Men don't always remember even, even their wives' birthdays or their wives, uh, or, or, or uh, they forget Valentine's Day. I mean, it's hard to imagine that this happens, but it happens a lot. But it's the little things. As a spontaneous weekend away together would be just great. Or, as you said, maybe just something small, like bringing home a rose one day and saying, this is for you, uh, my sweetheart. I, I love you. And uh, all these little things add up, and it makes the woman more responsive. And uh, men complain that women sometimes say they have headaches or not tonight. 
dear. But in reality, if they were pleasured and if they were fulfilled, they would welcome the, the experience, the intimate lovemaking as much as the man would because their drives are as high and as, as strong as the man. Doctor, thank you so much for being on there. We're out of time, but for the listeners, go to the website that the doctor recommended, awomanspleasure.com. The book is called A Woman's Pleasure. Call me right now if you want the copy that he sent to us. And and remember that he writes under a pen name. The pen name is J.F. Kelly. So J.F. Kelly is Dr. Warren Chappelle. Thank you, Dr. Chappelle, for being with us today. That was a great conversation. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be right back. Appreciate it. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. Changing places, an election day blowout as the GOP takes over the Senate by a 52-45 margin. With contests in Alaska and Louisiana still undecided, Kentucky's Mitch McConnell set to take charge. The presumptive Senate majority leader says there doesn't need to be perpetual conflict. But look, we, we do have an obligation to work together on issues where we can agree. Democratic leader Harry Reid congratulating McConnell, saying the message from voters is to work together. Fox News Radio's Jared Halper and Republicans add to their House majority as well. For the first time, West Virginia sending a woman to the Senate. For all those young West Virginia girls and young women, I hope that this is just the beginning of a trend. Seven-term GOP Representative Shelley Moore Capito. But not every race went the Republicans' way. Let's make this 